In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. Today is Sunday, the 26th of September, 2021. It is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Reverend Father Blessed Amba Njume. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 25 to 29. In those days, the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses and took some of the spirit that was upon him and put it upon the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did so no more. Now, two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the minister of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, taken from Psalm 19. The response to the psalm is, The precepts of the Lord are right, the gladden the heart. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. James, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted and their rust will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have killed the righteous man, he does not resist you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 43, verse 45, and verses 47 to 48. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is for us. For truly, I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, 
it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung round his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Praise others' good deeds even if not of your group. Praise others' good deeds, even if not of your group. Beloved of God, usually it is very difficult to appreciate others who are not of our group yet who do the same thing as we do. Often, the reason is because we see them as competitors, threats, and rather than see their competition from a positive point to push us to do better or to be like them, we rather see them as enemies. It is hard to find, for example, one choir in church appreciate another that sings as good as they or even better. They will rather criticize and find every reason to make the others see that they are not their match. The question to ask is, for whom are they singing? If for God, then why see others as enemies such that we find it hard to accept them or applaud them? Likewise, a bakery will hardly ever recommend or praise another bakery that produces bread as they they think that praising another will mean all their customers will be bought over. Nor will a football club praise another for playing good football. We always feel we are the best and others cannot be better than us. If at all they are doing well, they may just be as good as we are but never above us. Can a pastor appreciate a priest for preaching the gospel, and vice versa? A certain jealousy, envy, led by an unhealthy competition, and a certain feeling that we are the best, or must remain the best, blinds us from seeing the good others do, who are of our type. We tend to hate others who do good, because they are not of our group. In the gospel, the apostles of Jesus were not happy seeing a man who was not an apostle casting out demons in Jesus' name and they forbade him. He was casting out devils, something good. So why were they stopping him? They were stopping him for three reasons. One, because he was not an apostle. Therefore, in their thought, only an apostle had the reserve, the prerogative, to do what the man was doing. Was he an apostle? No, so stop him. But they were wrong. The second reason for which they forbade him was because they thought only they had the right to do it. So who was he? Third, the reason for which they stopped him was because they were jealous and envious that some other person too could do it and perhaps even better. Who knows? Focus may have been taken away from the apostles and would have been given to the man. They would have lost their prestige, they would have lost their fame if they allowed some other person to steal the show. But Jesus told them, You need not forbid him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is for us. 
Now, dear friends, we need to put meaning into these words of Jesus. In the first reading, we find a similar situation. Two men, Eldad and Medad, also prophesied, though they were not among the 70 elders on whom the Spirit of the Lord descended. Joshua asked Moses to forbid them, but Moses said how he wished that all the Lord's people were prophets. This is exactly the point. We feel that because we are not of the same group, therefore, others should not do what we do. Dear friends, do not see others who do the same thing as you as enemies or competitors such that you develop hate for them. See goodness and appreciate it even if not done by those of your group. You own no monopoly of God or His graces. The Spirit blows as it wills, and so others not of your group may also have been given the graces of God. So therefore, appreciate goodness when you see one. We should cut off all jealousy and envy. This is what Jesus means. If your right, right eye will cause you to sin, pluck it off. If your left hand will cause you to sin, cut it off. If it is jealousy that will make you not to see the goodness of others, cut it off. If it is envy that will make you not to see the goodness of others, oh, pluck it out. What is that vice that you have that makes you not to see the goodness of others? But dear friends, let us return to what Jesus said. He who is not against us is for us. This means if someone is doing good, then that goodness definitely should come from God. He continues to say, no one who will do good will turn, therefore, to speak against me. Now, this is very important. That we should welcome others who do good as us, we should guard and keep watch, especially when it comes to gospel preachers. The fact that we all preach the gospel, beloved, be careful. Do not fall prey and say, after all, they all preach the gospel. The fact that we all preach the Bible does not mean we all preach correct doctrine. If someone comes to you as a preacher of the Bible or the gospel, before you go to them, or before you listen to them, before you go to any church in the name of they have good preachers, be careful. You need to ask yourself some questions. We now listen to some Christians who say, after all, church is church, church na church. No, no, not all those who preach the gospel Preach correct doctrine. Ask yourself, what does your faith teach you? That's the first question to ask. And if you know what your faith teaches, what does your church doctrine teach you? Second. And if you know what your church doctrine teaches you, the next question to ask is, the other preachers who preach the gospel, do they preach the same or do they preach contrary? If they preach contrary to your faith, dear friends, it is not every preacher of the gospel that you must welcome because they are eloquent in speech or because they preach the gospel. Be careful. That is why Jesus says, No one who does something good in my name will come after to speak against me or contradict me. Be careful. What does your faith teach? What does your doctrine teach? And do the other preachers preach the same or do they preach contrary? Jesus himself has said, In the world we will have suffering, but be brave, he has conquered the world. Jesus himself says, He who wants to be a follower of mine must be ready to carry his cross every day and follow me. So dear friends, if any preacher were to preach contrary, run away from them. They are contrary to Christ. They are not the same. So this is what we should guard against. But if any other person preaches the same gospel, preaches the same truth, be they wherever they come from, let us see the goodness and the truth that they preach and accept them as one with us. For he who is not against us is for us. But he who preaches a contrary doctrine 
is definitely against us. Let us pray for that grace that we may learn to accept goodness from others, even if they are not from our group, provided they stand for the same truth and preach the same gospel. But whatever is contrary, let us shun. Oh dear God, give us the grace to accept others when they stand for the truth and always to defend the truth when we see it. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a very blessed Sunday. Be careful. Keep God. He who is not against us is for us. But he who preaches a contrary gospel is definitely against us.